Yeah, but it yeah, it absolutely does. But Sam, hmm. what were you saying about wanting Peace Tea to be our sponsor earlier? Oh my God! Imagine the possibilities. Okay, look, I've been a big <laughs> Peace Tea advocate for a long time. You know, when when Arizona stopped being one dollar is when they really lost me. First of all, all right, look. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, look, okay, I'm, you, you got me. <laughs> For anybody not watching, all right, I'm clearly holding up the, the best flavor. We got the best flavor, no opinions. But uh, the best flavor of uh, peace tea. Raspberry. Yeah, it, it looks like yeah. that uh, Green Day cover where like it's kind of like a grenade. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You know, peace tea, culprit, if you're out there listening, the nerd militia loves you. <laughs> uh, yes, because the nerd militia ironically loves uh, peace tea in the yeah, same way that martial artists like to not smack people around. It's good to know how to beat people up, but you know, having the the power to do it, but then choosing not to, exactly. waking up the and like power to choose violence. Yeah, yeah, you, you gotta wake up every day with violence in your heart, and then See, look, choosing not to, like that. The logo of Peace Tea, made with peace, love, and happiness, and that's what we here at the Nerd <laughs> Militia hope for everybody out there. You know, we love and support you. <laughs> Mm. Well, I, I I do like peace, but I don't know who's buying peace tea. I don't know. Isn't Arizona? <laughs> that would be kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I don't know. <laughs> it's so cool. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, drinking all that Coke in peace. If only. That Coke is the fast track to peace. You know, they you... used to put Coke in Coke. <laughs> um, that's pretty common knowledge. I know it's crazy, right? <laughs> you know, what if you now hear me out for like typical D and D? Yeah, you get like a a company that's making like a a potion, health potions, medicine, but inside these uh these health potions, cocaine. <laughs> Jesus Christ! That's a potion of speed, man. Come on. <laughs> <Just start the show. laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Dungeons and Talk Shows, the talk show that brings you Dungeons, News, Monsters, I think, and Homebrews. Yeah. I am your host, Orion. And I'm your host, Sam. Welcome back to a new episode. Well, you know, it's good to be here. We got Peace Tea and D and D, so you know, I I am good to go for the week. But you know, we we got something else uh, special. We have a guest with us today. Uh, oh, why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, hi there. My name is Avery, uh, also <laughs> known as Dynabees on Twitter, unfortunately. And <clears throat> sorry, I have a slight cold. <laughs> And um, I guess most people know me for playing Gothy on Fool's Gold, which uh, my friend is Ooh. currently retelling as a YouTube series. That's awesome. Hmm. I'm personally yeah. a big fan of that. Like, I got introduced, like, like a couple years ago. Just kind of stumbled upon it. I'm like, okay, I love this. Like, Dingo's art style. It, it, it's yeah. cute. It's fun. Uh, her storytelling, uh, like, it, it pulls me in. But it's like secondhand storytelling because, like, I hear uh, Felix is the brains of the operation there. Yeah, he was our DM, um, and uh, yeah, <laughs> certainly he he is a pure chaos sort of DM that does not shy away from mm -hmm. uh, causing consequences. We call it, we dub him the consequence right. DM. Um, but yeah, <laughs> yes. Dingo has been the masterful reteller of our huge odyssey across the bellowing wilds where we do nothing but make things worse for everybody around us oh man <laughs> that's always good <laughs> you love to hear it love to hear it right right being an agent of chaos you know you know is just the best <laughs> i i just I've... real like i just fixed this on the uh stream as we're doing this <laughs> i i had the audio output for you guys gone so oh, like, no. uh, like I hadn't said, but don't worry, don't worry, because uh, uh, we had everything recording perfectly fine on the Libsyn. Right. 
So Rest backups for days, baby. Watchers. We <laughs> were prepared. Dream watchers were very <laughs> confused. <laughs> yeah, Orion's just some uh, moron talking to himself. <laughs> F's in the chat. <laughs> Oh well, we tried. Rest in peace, chat. It's the most D and D thing I've ever seen. <laughs> it actually like, is. Since you rolled in that one, I know. And to think, I have like a these little brass dice that uh, right in front of me, and Nat ones in the case. I, I should have popped them out and checked, but you know. Oh man, that reminds me. I forgot to show you. Okay. Okay. My friend, shout out to Ashley, one of my one of our biggest you know supporters for our podcast, sent me this pair of dice or this dice Ooh. set. Okay, I don't know if I can how well I can show this on camera, but well, metal does tend to shine. But ooh, ooh, that that that's nice, dude. They have like uh, they have like eagles on them. Let me pull out a D twenty. Like little metal eagles. Yeah, it's fucking cool. Here, check this one out. So like. I, I feel bad for bees because like I know, sorry, she doesn't she see. doesn't have she doesn't have the little camera feed there. No theater of the theater of the mind, man. Theater of the Ooh, mind. Like you got a DM describe, my friend. Uh, they got like silver yeah. uh, wing designs, like red numbers. Uh, you can see like the little claw details, the wings, and you can kind of hold it up for you there. Mm. Yeah. Okay, uh, I mean, I'll have to watch it. On <laughs> well, I can see it on like the on the YouTube tab that I have. Oh open. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like mm. ah, cool. like a picture on the actual. Thing. See but the yeah. the the perks of the multi stream. <laughs> it 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 works well. <laughs> the power, <laughs> <laughs> unfathomable. If Orion could learn to speak, he'd be going a long way here. But uh, it's okay. English is hard. So Sam here well, has. Can we do our intro? Uh, no, no, we're we're like, good. We're, we're, but uh, okay, right. yeah, uh, <laughs> Sam here has actually never really gotten it. He doesn't he's never seen any of that uh, dingo stuff. So he as far as fool's gold Ooh. goes, he is new to the whole thing. OK, yeah. what I have uh, seen, I love. <laughs> <laughs> I've shown him. Good uh, yeah, I showed him some pictures of your character. Oh, well, awesome. I, saw, I, watched, I watched a few um, of the uh, animations on YouTube. Oh, you did. Oh, yeah. yeah. Ah, researching for uh, today's show then. Ah, uh, this was before when you mentioned uh, Dingo to me. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. But so, yeah. Orion, where did you where did you get started with Fool's Gold? Did you uh, start, I, like at the beginning. I uh, yeah, at, at the very beginning, like a uh, a couple years ago, like I uh, I was doing a lot of factory work and like I'd have D and D on the weekend, so I just like kind of crawl into my little space for doing D and D and like uh, after a campaign, it's like, uh, I'm, I'm bored now. So I'd go through like some YouTube stuff and kind of stumbled upon it that way. Okay. So you were there right there. Like you were there where it dropped basically. You've been following it since it started. Yeah. Yeah. Cause uh, it, it's only been going on for uh, not even that long. I think uh, uh, when I first got into it, they're like maybe two or three episodes. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, now we're up to episode thirty-one. You know, it, yeah, I, Dingo yeah. always gets me confused because she'll start talking about the episode that she's currently writing, and everybody uh, else yeah. only knows about the episode that's just been released. So I'll get the numbers mixed up, mm. um, just based off of like who I had the last conversation with. No, oh, it, it makes sense. But like, uh, I do have one question uh, as far as Fool's Gold, yeah. gold goes. Uh, I've noticed that like there are some characters that kind of like uh, pop in and pop out. I I'm guessing that those were uh, players that would just kind of come and go as uh, things went. Yeah, we had two other characters with us, uh, Julian and Gorthan, who were our two friends, John and Puddles, um, who they started the Fool's World campaign with us. But Dingo mm. started retelling the Fool's World campaign about <laughs> halfway through like the actual campaign. Yeah, I kind of gathered that. Unfortunately, right around, yeah. Unfortunately, right around the time where the whole Taras thing happened, uh, Julian and Gorathan's players, who are like currently married, had a baby together and oh, had to okay. out because just they couldn't keep up the schedule of you know it was babies are demanding and mm. they just couldn't stick around any longer. So uh, yeah, you know all about that. Essentially, <laughs> yeah. Father of four. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. I couldn't imagine. Um, yeah, we tried for as long as we could to do it with with baby, 
but eventually mm. it was like once the baby gets moving like once they're running around it's like okay we can't this cannot mm. be done anymore um so Gorth and Julian in the in the world are kind of just hanging out in Bundarico basically it's kind of just where we left them in in um in media then that's interesting mm-hmm. so yeah I know that there are a lot been... of oh, sorry <laughs> no no go for it uh, oh, how long oh. have you been working with Fool's Gold and Dingo and all them? So I've I have known Dingo since 2013 or 2012. Oh, wow. Damn, and I should have been looking at. Saying... Uh, sorry, you, you can continue. I I just looked at our, our comments and I'm just like, uh, I I should have been looking at those from the beginning. <laughs> Top tier professional here that uh, we would have known uh, right away oh, that, that we were missing some out. audio. <laughs> <laughs> We'll get it. We'll get it. <laughs> One day. Uh, the free screen action. <laughs> so I've known Ningo and Felix since around 2013, I think, oh, wow. or 2012. One right. of those. And then the Fool's Gold campaign, Dingo was telling me that it was 2016 to 2018 was how long the campaign ran for. And Jeez. then she started animating the fool's gold youtube series just as the campaign was ending so that mm-hmm. kind of there was a small section at the end where they kind of inter- interlocked right. and um the campaign has wrapped up since then and now she's just retelling everything okay okay but uh okay. i basically still see dingo and felix daily now mm-hmm. um because the three of us are still just like thick as thieves and uh arena's player carson He's off doing some extra schooling stuff. Like he kind of went his own way, and then you, okay, and, and puddles or John and puddles also they have babies, multiple babies now, and then another a third bean is on the way. Oh Ooh. yeah, uh, it should be coming this month actually. Uh, I I wish them the best of luck with that because as a father of four, <laughs> it's rough. I mean, on one hand, you are raising your own D and D party to be had at some yeah. point, but holy shit. If it's like, dude, I, I can't even handle it sometimes. Like I'm picking food up off the floor. Uh, con- like, mm-hmm. I, I, I had a whole thing this morning. Like, why are all these half eaten apples all over my house? Why are there pop tarts <laughs> all over the floor? Like, and like being a DM is just like, okay, I deal with this with my players, but like my patience meter for dealing with bullshit from players like is reset because I have a whole week in between sessions. <laughs> I, you don't get yeah, with uh, kids you're lucky you get an hour tops yeah mm, i can't even take a shit <laughs> without these kids <laughs> trying to kill each other <laughs> excuse me oh you're, you're good Oof. okay i should preface to the audience that i do have a little mm. bit of a cold so i'm trying not to cough like into the microphone or i try to i try to mute myself before i before i start coughing but nah, you, you got it you got it we wish you best health <laughs> mm. the funny thing about being a spectator to uh friend to uh, people with children is that john is a real a real viking of a man like he's, mm. he is he's he, he is a real like a viking in the modern era mm. uh so it's very fun looking at his his kids and being like you guys are going to be very interesting <laughs> when you guys get older <laughs> based mm. off of just your dad and yeah. how much your dad is just like, yeah, let's go, let's go axe throwing. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. yeah. Love and that, I love that. Uh, definitely a uh, shout out to uh, Jade uh, Callisto and Josh Ring in chat for letting us know that, well, especially Jade, because all platforms letting us know that we had the, uh, <laughs> the that mute Thank for a you. while. Like, oh, damn. How many folks, man? Oh. Y'all are very appreciated. <laughs> so mm. now that we've met you a little bit, got through the introductions, we got through a little bit of free talk. Well, I guess we can go into the free talk now. How is your week going, guys? Do anything <laughs> interesting? Hmm. But uh, there, there's always lots of uh, crazy stuff. Uh, things that I shouldn't talk about on the podcast. So I'll just leave those right, alone. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, anyone on the uh, Nerd Militia server knows that there's uh, been uh, some trouble with uh, our uh, AI technician. Like, uh, he, he's got oh, some yeah. uh, shit going on, and uh, well, wishing you know, him all, the, some, wishing him the best of luck. You know. Yeah. You know, in some positive news, um, 
am I, so correct me if I'm wrong, but you just had your 10 year anniversary, right? Uh, yes, actually. Oh, right. e- yesterday. Uh, yeah, I have survived oh. 10 years of yeah. marriage. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, you know, get the I survived t shirt. You know, marriage is a lot thing. like a D&D campaign. OK, uh, well, <laughs> it, 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 it is that Explain. level of commitment. <laughs> It, on, it, no. It's hard to keep those schedules together, and like, like right, getting fuck. everybody to show up on time. <laughs> I like the like it's life. Like marriage is like a D and D campaign. Whether yeah. it's like, all right, wife, all right, honey, whether or not I do this just depends on this dice roll. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. You know, Over like, persuasion. like it, it really is. Like, how many people do you know that have made it to level twenty? Mm. I mean. You're exactly. At right now. Look at you guys. You're at level yeah. ten, yeah. 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 You, you'd think I'd have a better proficiency bonus at this point. Use, that, use this as your guys' motivation in your marriages. Get to that level twenty. You know, fight mm. that big, big bad. <laughs> <laughs> if that's your boss at work or your wife's best friend, I don't know. Do what you got to do, I guess. Well, I, I'd say the big bad is the IRS because, like, you know, you get those tax benefits. <laughs> We can't talk about the IRS on this podcast. <laughs> They'll come for us. <laughs> Dude. What's well, the IRS? That, that, that should be the big bad for like anyone who runs an acquisitions incorporated game. <laughs> You're fighting the tax collectors. That sounds like an excellent premise for a game, honestly. Oh, fan. It definitely is. Uh, the last time I ran an Ack Inc. game, we had uh, this uh, stoner druid who was trying to build a weed empire. And like taxes were absolutely going to come up. Like there was a point where he wished like, a you know, that dragon heist uh, module. They uh, he wished for the treasure from that because I-, I made it a canon thing. And he's like, OK, I'm just going to wish that treasure was here. Hey. Yeah, my, my brother decided to like do a one shot that was connected to the campaign and random roll table. Someone got a dagger with a wish. Oh, Ooh, oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I could have said no, but like it got used in a way that ended up uh, breaking their ship. Oh, Unu uh, filling a, a airship's hull full of gold that it couldn't actually hold. Oh yes! <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Class. Oh no! Yeah, it, it straight that ruptured. A- <laughs> and then they had to pay villagers to scoop the, the gold into the into a bag of holding. Which uh, led to like a the bank vault for the for headquarters. Boy, sure not breaking any new ground by like making a wish that comes back to bite you in the ass immediately. <laughs> that's like text yeah, number one first to. thing you're supposed to avoid when you make a wish. It's yeah. like, hey, consider how you gotta be super these specific. Don't work. Well, the thing yeah. is, I didn't even monkey paw that as a DM. I was just like, okay, hold sure? up, I got I got to do some math, <laughs> like. <laughs> And that's I, I, just the consequences of your choices. No, that that I, was just yeah, straight. You didn't need to do any math. If that was if that was the wish they made, that's on them. It's like, <laughs> it's like I don't know, man. Yeah, I didn't exactly. even have to be clever about this shit. You just did it all on yourself. I, I really didn't have to. I was just like, okay, uh, hold on. The the av- the the size of the what they got for carry capacity is this many tons. Now uh, figuring out uh, how many ounces in a gold coin. Multiply that by. Uh, <laughs> Half a million. Oh, oh God, a million. that's way too much math for me. You could barely oh, even do the basic multi- Lost like me basic addition that D&D requires. <laughs> <laughs> Calculating <laughs> volume and weight? Uh-uh, no way. I did not mm. sign up if there's more than two modifiers on an attack, you lost me already. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, like, I, I'm... It's, it's weird. Like, I'm ironically terrible at math. Like, I've gotten better at math over the years, and I passed my uh, geometry class in high school, which... That really came in clutch for calculating the uh, volume of gold uh, rupturing the ship. But at the same time, is about uh, the extent of math that I've used since high school. (laughs) (laughs) It really is. Sometimes I remember getting in an argument with my uh, high school math teacher about uh, him not adjusting his binary clock for daylight savings time. (laughs) Oh, jeez. (laughs) <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm over here. We have a running gag at my table that I can't do math past 8 p.m. Like, like that's my <laughs> cutoff time. Where the, it just stopped, that part of my brain just stops functioning. Like, mm-mm, clock that's down. Valid, mm. <laughs> I, I love it. No math after 8 p.m. Just put out a sign. <laughs> well, 
it's like a suit like i'm legit i make a roll and then i'm like oh no what's this plus this plus this and as soon as my brain flatlines i'm like what time is it and i look at the clock and it's past eight and it's like ah oh, yeah i oh, know it's I like 59 she brains just like oh, oh 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 yeah exactly <laughs> got him mm. no but, but i think now PM. is a great time we have a free shit alert right uh, you, you know what? We do have a free shit alert, and it's a uh, yeah. free shit <laughs> uh, coming to us straight from D and D Beyond. Uh, you can now download the twelve uh, sigil faction recruitment posters. Now, uh, these are yeah, they're they're kind of neat. Let me uh, just pull that up uh, on the uh, little thing in the stream, and there we go. Yeah, we got a bunch of posters here, and I I love factions. I absolutely love factions. And, like, you got 12 of them right here. They're all very kind of bare bones, like, where the headquarters is, uh, what what plane they are aligned to. Now, you might like that, because you've been looking at a lot of the planes recently, Sam. True. And it lets you, like, oh, some iconic members, and what the epithet of this... Uh, faction what is you- so uh, an epithet kind of describes like the the general uh gist like uh what uh, they really embody so uh-huh. everything else is like bare bones like if you're a dm you can roll with these things like i personally love templates when i'm doing stuff like uh, when i was running yeah. acquisitions uh, the, the book provides a uh, fa- some faction templates and i carried those over to traditional D factions and then ended up giving like a, all these little uh, bonuses and little things to each of those people. So like, so if you encounter like a Harper agent, every Harper agent has like these three abilities okay, or like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or everyone in the uh, Emerald Enclave has these three abilities. Like it mm-hmm. doesn't matter what faction it is. Like everyone in that faction has a certain set of abilities in addition to their normal set. So it, it makes a, uh, battling any faction like a little bit more interesting right right yeah i could definitely see that i i do definitely see that like you fall into the problem of like you got like cultists and you got like agents you know and they're all generally the same they're people with like pitchforks or swords or something you know they're not special nothing special about them they're just guys (laughs) <laughs> yeah, uh, they got some fun little mottos here, like the Athar. Uh, their motto is "Who claim the gods are frauds," or like uh, the Bleak Cabal, uh, "Who find no sense in the multiverse." Okay. Uh, okay. okay. The Doom Guard, who celebrate destruction and decay, sign up today. <laughs> hey, look! Let's take out a slogan. The Fraternity of Order, who discover laws to find the truth. Oh, okay, okay. So. A bunch of like little things like this. It it can be fun for players to have an affiliation, and like this is very ambiguous. So you could like have it give as little or as much meaning to a campaign or a backstory for a character as you want. And more importantly for me is the just the the general template of it. You know, there's some p- potential there. And I, I I just like the recruitment posters because like you know that that's a little thing to throw at your player like oh that's some substance yeah you know adding to role play adding to background substance is always good for me i think mm. oh dude looks like i have like fox ears <laughs> <laughs> you looking at your camera in the stream yeah i was <laughs> Cool. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> it looks to me more like you have like big, like big horns. Oh yeah. Ooh, yeah. You know what? You're yeah. right. I'm Ooh. seeing that. Like, uh, like, um, like Hellboy's horns. He's, he's like, oh yeah, like, Sam the oh, Tiefling. Yeah. We're, we're good to go. <laughs> dude, imagine like the pearl white like horns. That'd be cool. oh, dude, that'd uh-huh. be so much maintenance. Like. Dude, white stains so easily. I, I couldn't have white horns. <laughs> and and then you get those people that are all anal about it and they'll like harass you after Labor Day. Fuck that shit. Oh my gosh. Wow. Mm, Labor Day in the Forgotten Realms. 
They'd call it Peasants Day. <laughs> Peasants Day. Surf's I Day. Surf's, Surf's Day. Oh I love it. God. It's so good. It, it is. But well, congratulations. You all get to not squat like squabble in the mud for today. She's like, Woo! Huzzah! Huzzah! Yes. Oh, thank you so thank you so much. <laughs> yes, I you love one it. Extra corn. <laughs> I can finally pick out all the dry dirt from between my toes. Huzzah! <laughs> I can take a bath. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> I, I like to think that like most uh, towns and places in uh, your typical fantasy settings would use like bathhouses. You know what I mean? Like I, I kind of yeah. I like that kind of thing in. Uh, like if you say you're watching like some anime, you get like that feudal Japan and they're like, okay, mm. we got to go on to the bathhouse. And it's like, eh, you know, yeah. they kind of make or sense. They have, like, they have like the taverns where they have like, you know, kind of like a bathhouse where they have like the big like mm. water basins that they just like bring up to the rooms or whatever. It's like, ka-chunk, swoosh, you know, and they just like, there you go, hop in there. Then they carry it back downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did something I was listening to an audiobook that had something like that oh, really <laughs> well, that works yeah it was really good. they had like a dwarf dude who's just like yeah man I gotta take a bath he was like alright <laughs> big old <laughs> love it we have a running gag in our campaigns or like a running scenario where we yeah. almost always go to spas at some point uh -huh. mm. if not multiple oh. times like a fantasy spa beach is such episode. a fun like <laughs> little exactly it's the beach it's the spa episode we'll, oh, we'll be yeah. done finding a big bad and we'll go to the spa and it's like mm. kind of a, a good a good like uh why did I I was trying to think of like what's the what's the correct term for like giving somebody I don't know a treat like you give the DM mm. a treat like here here yeah. what can you come up with with the idea of a, of a fantasy spa section. And mm. then, of course, it's Felix. So he's like, "Oh yeah, every you know, everybody's a mud elemental or a water elemental there. So you just like they're the ones that take care of you the entire time, stuff like that." Yeah, it'd but be like spirited away. It's a fun way to relax. Oh, exactly. Oh yeah. Well, you know, you know, I run an, I have a campaign that I just run privately for Dingle and Felix, and spirits yeah. are a part of the world. So mm. I was just like, you know what? Fuck it. I am just going to stick you in a legit. Okay, wait. Way back. Have you like, have you heard I, about? Sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. Have you heard about the Studio Ghibli uh, TTRPG? No. No? Yeah, that, that's a thing. There's a oh. Studio Ghibli uh, inspired Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, I think we glossed that's over that like a few game. weeks ago, but... <laughs> I think it's out now. Um, oh, is it? Let's see here. Yeah, there, there's yeah. like a Kickstarter or something. I, I remember that yeah. much. Ooh. That um, definitely seems like something that should have been around like even five years ago. I'm surprised mm. there's something like that already. Well, yeah. I, I think it took the OGL to kind of like break up the uh, monotony of TTRPGs in general for people to be like, you know what? Mm. Fuck it. Studio Ghibli, d and I want it. I think it's because people saw Avatar, the Avatar one, and went, oh, oh yeah. okay, mm. I guess we can just do anything oh, yeah, and it'll be yeah. gangbusters. Because they had the top rating Kickstarter of mm. any tabletop game, I think, is, is currently Avatar. Is La Avatar the Last Airbender? I think. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So this was posted in August. And uh, not to like, you know, toot our own horns, but Fool's Gold is second. If I remember, oh, yeah? it used to be second. Mm -hmm. It still is, as far as yeah. I know. Uh, Fool's but, Gold like, is right up there. Yeah. Oh, okay. So here, check this out. So it's called Obojima. Was said to be a world spanning over 250 pages worth of details. Oh and yeah. Content. Yeah. Dingo totally ran a sponsor spot for that. Also, oh, I don't yeah. mean to. Yeah, sound, I, I didn't mean to yeah. sound like a total asshole when I was like, "Oh yeah, we're such, we're so great." Like, <laughs> nah, nah, you're good. You know, like you know, it, it's legit thank you because to everybody that it's ever good. Gave us money. <laughs> like it, people, if it, if it wasn't good, people wouldn't be throwing money at it, you know. And and it's just like Felix has really worked hard with his world building to make something interesting, and then like Dingo just kind of oh, like yeah. throwing it out there. People like, yes, please, four claimers. Fucking amazing. I love it. Dude, I'm seeing a player so bad right now. <laughs> <laughs> He's in the DM rut of just like, oh, I, I, I'm i running this. I like it, but I also want to play. Yeah. Oh, what's that? The end Sorry? Oh, so I, I'm currently running our uh, Grim Hollows campaign. Uh, okay. It's coming towards the end. You know, I was hoping to end it by the end of the year. And I'm I'm in the the vibe of wanting to be a player, you know. It's 
It's been a while oh, since I played the game. Been like, <laughs> I have so many characters I've I want to play. You know? <laughs> I've been like a GM exclusively for about two years now because oh, uh, we haven't been playing a new game for a while. And I'm just looking at Felix like, hey, when are we like, come on, your turn again, buddy. I need I, I need to be the one that causes problems for yeah. once. Mm. <laughs> I'm tired of being the guy who solves problems. Yeah, I, like, at this I point, kinda I've get that. <laughs> longer than I've been a player. Like Yeah, it, it's, what I, I find guy? myself being that person in our games where it's just like um, I kinda wanna get back into the, the DM seat again, but I kinda don't because like uh I I love our players uh, in our current game, but I feel like uh, my fellow players don't really uh, they don't know how much control over the world they actually have. And yeah. since they haven't tapped into that yet, if I run a game, they're just going to be standing there like, what do we do? And I'll just be like, what do you want to do? Yeah. like, <laughs> And they're just like, you tell me. It's like. <laughs> This, that's not how this works. I mean, like uh, you, you uh, go, you, you go to your the hometown in your backstory. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, uh, Uncle John shows up. Oh shit! Uh, <laughs> DM, tell me about Uncle John. It's like, what's your you? uncle? But your <laughs> uncle. Why, why don't you no. do introductions? Tell the tell party. <laughs> yeah. It's like I've, I, I want to. I'm the kind of DM that gives more power to my players uh, creatively when it mm -hmm. comes to little things like that, and. I don't think our current party's ready for it. That's okay. You kind of gotta. It's like boiling the frog, you know. Mm, you absolutely. And you don't want them to like completely realize all at once that they have complete control over the world because that'll feel me mm. to use that against you. But yeah. Like giving them a little bit of a taste test of like, ooh, you guys get to decide some of this stuff. Um, yeah. It, you know it, what you could, what Felix would probably do, and what I would do is um wait until they mess up and then definitely make sure like you know it's one of those classic things where they fuck up and then you then wait a little bit and then you show them how exactly it affected the world mm -hmm. you know classic classic D, &D stuff of, of just being like oh yeah this thing that you did definitely really changed stuff man my cold must be hitting me really hard because i'm just spouting class like basic D, &D sh stuff right now <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes I'm it needs sorry. to be said you know <laughs> like get back to the basics that is true. Every time you start a new D&D &D fresh, sometimes you do just kind of have to remind yourself like, oh yeah, there's some really basic stuff you have to start at. Like, accidentally like accidentally nuking your players because you forget that like they're tiny babies when they start out and that nobody mm, has yeah. on, like 30 hit points. Oh my god. Definitely yeah. that's that's a problem. <laughs> that's so funny because <laughs> in our second session, um, we had one of our players get bodied by a, uh, a goose hydra. <laughs> A um, goose hydra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was a, <laughs> it was a big That's mama excellent. goose with. Uh, I believe I gave it four heads at the time, and um, you know we had our uh, our roguish tabaxi. You know he went to go scout out, and he was. I was like, you know, you turn around this corner, you see what looks to be you know a little outset grove with a small pond, <laughs> see a few like ducklets in the water, you know seem to have you know between one and two heads at times then you see the large mama goose you know catch oh. <laughs> you know it was like it clocks you all heads turn his first idea was like i strike it <laughs> i was like you're crazy oh my god <laughs> but the worst mm. part was out of you know the multi-attack of four three of them were crits yeah, that's that's Into rough. Uh oh, <laughs> Into the death. I was uh, like, oh, you were rolling open like in the uh, in the roll twenty chat, I believe, yeah. and you didn't know how to fudge dice rolls on roll twenty. Like I still like, I think I've I learned how to do it for like a day, then I forgot how to do it by the time it became relevant again. I was like, oh no, yeah, I was like, okay, so the last hit knocked you down. I don't think it would go for a killing blow. He was like, no, nah, it's fine, just end my shit. <laughs> I was like. I was like, there's nobody else around. You did kind of walk up on the nest. <laughs> oh, cool. Uh, Jay joined our uh, server. Yeah, yeah. I did see that. I was talking nice. to them in the, the general chat. Mm. Goose Hydra is an excellent concept, though. <laughs> it's mm, really it, good. I like, don't even to, remember where you found that. It was so cool. It worse. Yeah, it was, it was only like a CR3 or 4. 
But you know, what? strong for them at that like at that level, you know. The multi attack is what really makes that one dangerous because, like, if you're one v one, okay, that's mm-hmm. which it was one v one. Everybody else was more uh, back, and he's he like, did, he he's like Tabaxi Rogue. He gets right up in there. Yeah, he did kill one of the heads before you went down, though. So that was something. <laughs> I legit forgot that like a CR three would be an appropriate level of yeah. like, difficulty for a goose That's because so we funny. have a goose. Oh, sorry. Go we have a goose in our PDF, yeah, which is a CR twenty, I think. <laughs> it's as strong as the trash. Jesus Christ! If not slightly stronger. Oh my it's a, god! It's a it's a magical. It's called the do- no. It's a called the Doom Duck. It's a duck. The uh, Doom it's Duck. Magical hat. It's, oh yeah. It's no, the same. The it's the same duck as the one Dingo uses to censor everything in the video. That's it's a monster now that you can encounter. That's so uh, cool. Yeah, and I think it's if it's not a CR twenty, it's damn close to it. And uh, yeah, so. I forgot that they're not actually supposed to be like super mega powerful creatures. <laughs> that's all yeah, I know of them now. Yeah, I mean, monsters. if you've ever met a guard goose in real life, it's like yeah, they yeah. are legit. Like uh, my uh, I'm wife's from Canada, man, we have Canadian geese. Like the, you don't; those guys mm. do not fuck around. Uh, uh, they do not. Uh, my wife's grandmother, uh, she uh, had some neighbors across the street that had a guard goose. So it's like, oh, forget the oh. forget your attack dog, like. Nope, hey, guard goose. Like your tech dogs can't fly. Holy shit, that would be worse. Yeah, yeah. That's probably and then funny. they spread their wings out to make themselves seem bigger, and they flap their arm around, so it's like a, a more hostile motion. <laughs> right, right. Like exactly. Yeah, like yeah. You know what? Hey, Canada, we're neighbors. I'm up here in Maine. <laughs> I'm not a neighbor to Canada. You could be. It's too cold here. It was very cold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sam's a Jersey boy. I am a Jersey. Okay, boy. Okay, you guys are on. Oh yeah, you are on the East Coast. Duh. Yep. Based off of your like time zone. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. all the way on the West. <laughs> oh uh, yeah. So it's like what, like Ontario? Is, it, is Ontario what's good? Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> 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 I got a wide variety of wrong knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> I'm approximately well, wrong about many to... things. <laughs> not even approximate. Ontario's over the Great Lakes, bud. Like it's not even far from you. Oh, man. It feels <laughs> <far>. <laughs> Honestly, uh, place, <laughs> whenever someone says Ontario, I always think of that one character from Spinneret, the werewolf of London, Ontario. <laughs> And yeah, it, it, it's a oh, web comic. It, it it's great. I've I've talked about it on the show before. It's the one where like Ben Franklin's a time traveling superhero. Oh yeah, what the fuck? Yeah, uh, he uh, he catches a ride do- during his kite experiment with a time traveler. Gets dropped off in like a uh, two thousand seven. And the time traveler's like, hey, uh, you stay here till I finally find some time to come back and get you. And then, like, uh, Ben Franklin walks into a biker bar like the Terminator, like, I need clothes. And they're like, they see this old naked guy, like, what the fuck? And they start, uh, like, harassing him. Yeah, what the fuck is going on here? (laughs) Yeah, so he he takes a a couple of their, uh, he knocks a couple guys out, takes their clothes, and in the middle of that brawl, he finds out, because he's so important to the time stream, the universe bends reality around him so he cannot be hurt in any way. This is like Ben Franklin gets isekai'd. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, isekai into the modern it world. It sounds like an extreme anime present. It does, right? Well, it, yeah, it's the irony there because, like, uh, the main character Spinneret, she hates manga and loves like uh, Western comics, even though there's a lot of anime influence. Okay, okay. And then they have a they got the League of American Superheroes and the League of Canadian Superheroes. <laughs> Never heard of a Canadian superhero. Is it just all hockey players? Uh no, they got like Werewolf of London, Ontario, the Green Gable, a uh, uh, Cat of Nine Tails, uh, and, and like uh, I think they had like a another one like it's a, like, a Were Cerberus, which that sounds like an amazing monster to throw into a. That does sound awesome. Yeah, that yeah. sounds fucking awesome. Like imagine your your players fighting a Were Cerberus. Like you got like a werewolf 
with multi attack coming from like these two extra heads. You know what's really cool? Speaking of server, down next to I, so, so I'm curious mm. if you like this idea. Um, so we have our uh, we had a Tabaxi Druid in our party who um, acquired the Fae transformation, you know, mm. as an addition to her, you know, humanoid class, right? So now she's, you know, a blood Fae. So I kind of gave, you know, some Fae magic influence to her Druid abilities and changed her wild shape and gave her a mythic shape instead. And I mm. homebrewed some like mythical creature transformations for her okay. <laughs> and like i gave her like a like a griffin a kutal you know a luska you know a few fucking oh, you should, oh. it'd be kind of neat if it'd be kind of op oh, if, uh, server, if fox is you know? still yeah like it'd be kind of op if uh, fox stays around but being able to turn into like a little phoenix like fox like that'd be all I right about it that'd probably be like the last one she unlocks like yeah you know, you know that makes sense like late game oh, her, her and fox like Future <laughs> Joe Breast combined. Oh man! Actually, that'd be a fit. Able, so she just. Hmm? Sorry, I'm curious about the. Oh, no. I'm now go go ahead. Maxi. Yeah. So is she just able to transform into other creatures? So it's her wild you, shape. The moves that you've given her. Oh, awesome. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I, 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 she still has the, the normal wild shape, but as mm -hmm. like an addition, she has a buffed up mythic shape. Yeah. Where it's I, you know a stronger creature, but less of a duration. Yeah, because like uh, yeah. We're, we're using the uh, yeah we're using the Grim Hollow stuff. So yeah. the idea that the uh, Grim Hollow transformations can like alter your class abilities is kind of a thing that he's been playing with. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. I mean, that's super interesting. So like, there's things like you know, lycanthrope, vampire, lich, you know, mm. specter can become like an undead. It's all mm. kinds of things. And, you know, Faye is one of them. Like, Orion's character became a primordial, you know, so now elemental-based creature. Mm. Cool. Yeah, it's <laughs> really cool. Yeah, I, I yeah, really one of the like players it. my campaign, excuse me. Oh, yeah. What's that? Uh, one of the players in my campaign, he's normally his default state is a skeleton dragonborn. Ooh. But uh, Ooh. In, a while ago, I gave him the ability to turn into a straight-up dragon. Like a straight-up oh. skeleton. Oh. He turns into a vulture dragon technically because he's sort of like he's mm -hmm. okay. I'm gonna try and be succinct as quickly. <laughs> right, right. He's, a, he's a skeleton dragonborn who uh -huh. is starting to become partially a grim reaper. He's like kind of moving into he's like I'm turning into a grim reaper because this is a world of spirits and grim reapers are a uh -huh. thing. But the grim reapers are represented by by vultures in this world. Like that's kind of their like okay. their animal, their creature. So he's turning from a skeleton dra a skeleton dragonborn and then he turns into a large skeletal vulture dragon oh, is kind yeah. of like his second evolution i like that i like that a lot. Uh, i'm in love with this i absolutely am the, the concept everything about it it's just yeah. mm, it, it's so good it's also a uh not only is that so okay again trying to do something with this he's <laughs> also got a adopted daughter who is okay. also a, a reborn grim reaper spirit and the dragon form is achieved by the two of them basically Dragon Ball Z fusion dance. Oh yeah, the two cool. of them working together. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's so good. I have tried to work on a fusion spell for uh, a homebrew. I, I never. I haven't actually put uh, like the whole thing in, in like a little PDF because I'm lazy. But <laughs> but one of these days because it would function a lot like uh, the. The soul uh, bound armor uh, merging that Sam used in uh, our previous game. Oh, yes. yes. Uh, that so one was a lot of fun. That, um, I the had way a character... I. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I was going to say the way I basically did it with him was that mm. I, I worked as if, like, when, you, when he works in tandem with his daughter, his daughter has a special, has certain spells that he can, he has access to when he becomes a dragon. And mm -hmm. then. It, they naturally get to do three turns of battle. They can be a dragon form. Okay. And then every turn after that is a dice roll dependent on the NPC, on whether or not they can maintain that form. So mm. they're guaranteed three. And then if everything after that is like up to the up to uh, the dice gods. So it mm. adds a little bit of extra like, you know, awesomeness when they keeps when they can keep going and uh, right, keep right. battling it I out like in a like giant dragon stable. form. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like that. Mm. Uh, we were looking into the uh, Soul Eater uh, D and uh, well, not mm -hmm. D and D, but like the Soul Eater 
uh, tabletop uh, that we found online. And it's very much it like that with the soul right? resonance. And it's just like, oh, man, I, love I, yes. I, I love the concept. And, you know, I think I might uh, take some of what you're talking about right there and bring it into some yeah. of the, the next game that I run. Because uh, Sam it loves putting companions in games. He like he uses uh, Stibble's Dude, Codex uh-huh. all the time. Dude, and like, the concept of like taking that fusion spell I was talking about, a little bit of what you're talking uh-huh. about there is like a, a, a spell to be able to fuse with companions. Because like, okay, every- look, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry, go ahead. Oh, that, that, that's that's it. <laughs> uh, oh, okay, cool. So one of my one of my friends was talking about um, how they're doing. You know, they're talking about doing an in person Digimon campaign where you know oh, one person oh, plays the, the player, one person plays the Digimon, and I'm so fucking excited for that. Really. Oh, <laughs> I'm gonna go on. <laughs> ah, dude. If I can recommend to you. Uh, to pimp out our Fool's Gold PDF, there yeah. is a new druid class there called Druid of the Swiftness, and it's the druid class that came from Goffy. Um, we basically used her inspiration for the entire class, and it's a class built entirely around you and your mount. And oh, having spells that. that work with you and your creature, you can cast spells through your creature as if, like, mm. you know, maybe you want to fire a lightning bolt, and it just turns into your creature's breath attack instead. And there's Ooh. later spells where you can transport back and forth, like, like I can pop to where the, my creature is. My creature can pop to where I am. If you need, like, to quickly travel. One of my favorite archetypes of like all time magic stuff is like the beast tamers, the summoners. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, yep. I love that. Yeah, there's that's I an entire that. subclass. There's actually a couple. Uh, there's another one that's a ranger subclass yeah. called. Oh, shit, I can't remember what it's called. Mm-hmm. No, it's in the PDF. It's a. Uh, uh, oh, I can't remember what it's called, but it's it's basically as a ranger, you are given this little ice iguana thing called a cryodon, and it's an ancient, extremely, uh, it's like a baby creature that can actually live for millennia. So you okay. have this guy, and then they're like, okay, as a part of your training as a ranger, you have to take this guy out, and you in the world, you together experience the world uh-huh. and grow mm, stronger. And it's like right. you're giving this guy Love knowledge, um, and then that's how you. But you're an entirely ice based. All mm. of your skill sets are kind of like icy based. Okay. I'd have to read up on it again, but it is similar to the Druid of Swiftness, where this little working in tandem with your little mm. iguana ice partner that mm. uh, kind of is this cute guy who sits on your shoulders. I remember oh, that yeah. being the art. I did have this idea for there. like a, a dragonborn Drake Warden who has like a, a Drake as his mount or like his. his oh, yeah. I love the idea of like a dragonborn <clears throat> who's like out there he's like actively hunting dragons <laughs> like uh, the irony like, uh, I, I think that's a classic like, trope and it's great he's like i'm coming for y'all <laughs> like, yeah, totally. only one fuck you and i love the idea of like you know maybe he like found this little drake and he's like oh you know innocent bean you know we'll get them together you know is this like a timon and pumbaa he's one of the good ones exactly because drakes aren't dragons you know so no, he's like, this one doesn't count. Look at him. He's just yeah. a pupper. Yeah, he's an innocent being. <laughs> yeah. Look at this baby. Look, yeah. look at him. <laughs> he's so yeah, cute I, and no I... alone. <laughs> Can we keep him? Yeah, specific. Exactly. God, that's us when we play in D- D&D. We're sucker for pets mm. and we're suckers for like sad orphan kids. Mm. I, for, I consistently forget whenever I put a sad kid in front of Dingo and Felix that that kid is getting adopted. Yeah. And I'm like surprised Pikachu face never happened. But I mean, pretty much all of my players it. have a companion at this point. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm weird with it because, like, yeah, I, I, I started the game with a goat. Yeah, you got a goat. You yeah. got a familiar. That's not like, weird. Goats are great. Mm. It's our carry goat. Yeah. Mm. So unfortunately, I, I got made... bodied in the last fight. Oh, no. Yeah. Burrito got, lives. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I made Gothi and Jawbone specifically around because I was looking at the Druid class. And I'm like, what do you mean they just summon a creature and then it like goes away and they mm. don't really like create a bond with it? I'm like, that sucks. Mm. I want a giant dog I can ride. <laughs> <laughs> and I want him mm. to be my best friend. Give me that. And then uh, great Felix, the gracious and all chaotic DM, DM was like, all right, you know what? Absolutely. Here you go. Oh, yeah. Damn, I, I absolutely love uh, the way that Felix DMs just from hearing these stories and hearing from you about it. It's just like, 
Damn, we've got to get him on the show. I, I want to like ask him some questions about his. Uh, I want to get in a game. I want to pick his brain. I can absolutely let him know that you want to hang out. I'll let him know. Pass along the word. He's awesome. He's a really great DM because Dingo and I have talked about this before. Felix, D- Dingo and I are both like writers, kind of in our free time. Right. I, mm. I make comics, and then she does the YouTube series. So we're both very privy to the three act structure and to like tropes and mm. stuff like that, like that writer's mm. brain. Felix is not as well versed in that stuff, which means he can pull shit out of his hat that none of us saw coming because right. none of us expected it. And because he, she's not following the rule book, it's so much more fun because because we can't call it. We're just like, what do you mean you can do that? And he's like, I don't know. He just does this shit, and it wrecks our world because we just didn't ex- we didn't see it coming. Like you know, sometimes you're watching an anime or a TV show, and you can clock it. From a, like a mile mm. away, like ah, oh, yeah, yeah. long lost siblings, something like that. With Felix, yeah, no, yeah. don't even, don't even bother. I wish I was that level of, I wish I had that much level of stealth as a DM of just mm. being able to be like, because that's like one of those gold standard like trophies every DM wants on their bookshelf is like the whole, the whole you did not see this twist coming, mm. uh, trophy. Yeah, I've gotten it a couple times out of some sessions, but it he fe- I can never top Felix on how hard he can throw a curveball at us. Uh, and, For sure, uh, Dingo too, but Dingo is really great at the long con world building twist. Mm. You know the kind of twist that you should have seen coming if you were paying attention. Right. Uh, yeah, but I'm not. I'm <laughs> I'm like too busy doodling <laughs> <laughs> to completely to like you know because she's she's sprinkling this in over like a year of a campaign, and then when she reveals it, it's like, God damn it! I should ah, uh, you know, it's one of yeah. those 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 things you could totally call. Yeah, I, I definitely too busy see running that. around. You know, uh, Felix strikes she me works. as the kind of guy that uh, he's probably got the made a player cry during a campaign he's probably got that one under his belt oh well, yeah but i cry all the time i cry when there's a sad commercial like it's not a hard bar to clear with me but he's definitely earned Look, some you uh, real people moments you should have heard my party when i introduced the ghost dog all right oh, no. <laughs> no. is he is he can you still pet him they tried they definitely tried <gasps> My brother tried so hard to bring it with us. They, they, were able, they were able to pet him because he kind of like would materialize and then de- dematerialize. Like mm. he was kind of oh, winking okay. in and out of existence. <laughs> well, at least I can tell him he's a good boy yeah, yeah. and he can hear me. Mm. Yeah. Uh, my brother was so gung ho. Like, uh, <laughs> tried. And then my character is like, no, no, this thing is going to be a whole lot of trouble. Uh, we got some weird, spooky shit happening in this town. There's nobody here, and just this dog. Something ain't right. <laughs> dog liked oh, no. our uh, our warlock, though. <laughs> mm. Oh, no doubt. Very intrigued by our necromancer. <laughs> I mm. bet. I wonder. Well, I mean, he's a he's a ghost necromancer. Mm. Exactly right. He's like he's mm. like you smell familiar. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it adds up. I I Ooh. always. <laughs> I love just like they're like oh we're walking through the town it's a nice night you know nobody seems to be out somebody rolls the highest perception you look to see a ghost dog sitting in the middle of the road <laughs> just <laughs> sitting there still I would be like that is a red flag and I'm ignoring it that's a dog <laughs> I was like it tilts its head at you as it mm. walks into a nearby building and disappears. <laughs> Mm. I'll be like, I'm going in that damn building because there's a dog in there that needs some head pats. So they were like, right. dog, you say. <laughs> Easiest way to lure me into a trap. Yeah, I was like, I need like 10 minutes to see a ghost dog. <laughs> Fuck Honestly. you and everything else you guys want to do. Em. There's a dog. <laughs> like, Dogs, get him. Amazing. I, I, that's the other thing. You know, when, you, when you're a DM and you have your players, you know exactly what cookie crumbs you have to lay down in order to get them to, mm. you know, I don't, yeah. I say I don't railroad, I leave cookie crumb trails. Mm. Exactly. You think you know, you think you're going there by yourself, but I've, I've <laughs> put cookies in there. Yeah. <laughs> you got to lure them in. A little message, you know, them into yeah, exactly. it. Exactly. And um, putting a tameable monster in Felix's way is like the ultimate cookie. <laughs> Him. it's like nine times out of ten if i'm like look at this thing it's big and it look, it's kind of sending so you could probably tame it it could probably be a pet and he's like and I'm like 
you know, he just goes right for it. Like, I don't know what our druid is up to, but she's like collecting all of like the heads and stuff of the enemies we've been killing. Yeah, heads, body <laughs> parts, you name it. She's, she's up to something. I don't know what's going are you on. sure? She, are you sure she's a druid, or did she just say she's a druid? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> look, I gave her insect as a spell, and her first idea was like. I need to check everywhere for every insect possible. Now she says she's just collecting like, beehives, like ant hills. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. Man, that is a weird, weird real horror movie. movie. <laughs> yeah, she's like, I want a mantis. I want ants. <laughs> mm. I like, oh, what have okay, I done? Do you, girl? <laughs> right. <laughs> happy. She's she's fitting the the summoner subtype for sure. She got an army. <laughs> uh, okay you know what you know what's one of, one of my like my cookies like the cookie come trail yeah, that'll get yeah. me it's, yeah it's, it's, this is really funny so uh, uh orion so you've watched the fool's gold campaign and you know how yes you remember how gothy has a a large rock named Dwayne? it's a really round rock that she just has mm. a rock okay. I, I think yeah. i have seen yeah, that in, yeah right so felix put that in our in our path and he was like, this thing, he he put in, he, we found it like really early in the campaign, like maybe like mm. session three. Mm. And I was just like, awesome. I love a rock. I love a good rock, especially if it's like an Hell orb yeah. sheath. Like fucking love me a good rock. Um, <laughs> and I'm like, this is mine. And the thing was that it was supposed to be a cursed rock where no matter how hard you tried, you couldn't get rid of it. But I never wanted to get rid of it. Right. It's a oh, premium rock. Good. So I just kept what it. What did it do? And Nothing. It, that's the only thing that it did was that if you tried to get rid of it, it would have magically appear on on your person again or like oh. in your possession. And okay. I never tried to get rid of it, so I never so, liked. I never, never found out the curse. Like, it, it was paranoia bait. It. It was <laughs> no, it was after the God. That would work on me. I have ADHD. Like the like the reverse. Like did I, where did I leave my phone? <laughs> yeah, where did I leave my rock? <laughs> God but damn it, my rock. Is so good. It wasn't until after the campaign was done that Felix told me that, like, yeah, you, that you never could have gotten rid of that rock even if you tried. Yeah. <laughs> well, I never wanted to. What, what happened if you like threw it at somebody? You know, it, it would just... appear in like next oh, day. I imagine unlimited like, ammo later. rock. <laughs> or unlimited rock. Yeah, I can't do that. It's, Op it's... man, unlimited. Rock. I can't do that to my rock friend. Too powerful. Because what if I, what if the rock breaks? What if I damage the rock? Uh, you know what? I, I feel that. Uh, on, on a side note, uh, Sam, would you, uh, why don't you tell us about the monster for the week? Oh, yes, yes. Is it a right. rock? <laughs> it is not a rock, unfortunately. Kind of wish it was now. but you know. should be a three-headed rock hydra. Yeah, unfortunately, it's just a, just a dragon and said, you know, I, I feel like I've let you down with it not being a rock. I'm so sorry. Okay. Over but to instead, you, you know, we got, rock. we got purple dragons today. I don't know how much you know okay. about purple dragons. You know. But, uh, Are you I'm asking gonna, me? I'm going to learn you with it. It's both a question and not a question. Okay, good, because I know nothing about them. Right, they're cool, purple cool. and they're dragons. I prefer it that way. They are, they are in fact, purple and dragons. So, <laughs> so to anybody who doesn't know what a purple dragon is, you know, other than the fact that it's purple, Let's start with telling you what a chromatic dragon is, right? So most people know uh, chromatic dragons were a type of dragon distinguished typically by a solid, non-reflective coloring of their scales. Uh, they were generally evil, greedy, and predatory, and usually worshipped Tiamat, the big mommy dragon god. All right. <laughs> so purple dragons. I've never a... referred to her as like that before. <laughs> yeah, the big Learning so much about mommy. you, Sam. Look, man, people, I've I've seen the internet, okay? <laughs> I know how they feel about dragons. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, continue, continue. Keep going. <laughs> Purple dragons were a species of chromatic dragon, you know, as their color is, you know, solid color. They were often thought to be hybrids of reds and blues and not their own kind of you know, thing. Uh, purple dragons were large, formidable creatures. They possessed long life bodies. Oh, I need to fit this all in my screen. They possessed long, lean bodies, and they had scales that ran from deep purple to midnight black. Two long white horns uh, sprout above its seething red eyes, while long black curved spikes run down from the base of its skull to the tip of its tail. 
The purple dragon's dark scales allow it to blend in with the night sky and dark caverns. So, at birth, a purple dragon scales are a pretty vibrant in indigo color. As the dragon matures, the scales become larger, thicker, harder, and darker. Adult dragons are uh, completely violet, growing darker until they are nearly black at the great worm stage. So we just get pretty. <laughs> I don't know what the comparison to like an amethyst dragon is. If they kind of take like the darker, you know, shades of the violet spectrum, and they're kind of like amethysts are more vibrant. I'm not sure. I don't know, and I also well. I mean, I would imagine it has more of a metallic sheen to it, despite it not yeah. being a metallic dragon. Right. Especially with um, purples, they are, you know, usually known to live in, you know, the underground, in the underdark. They are mm. often, you know, uh, what's what's the word? Uh, Subterranean? Yes. But they are, they are uh, kind of mistaken for black dragons. You know, as their dark color kind of blends in with the shadows and all that shit. But you know, Fair the enough. thing with that is, black dragons do not live underground. You know, people who live permanently in the deep hollows of the earth know purple dragons as an all too real and much feared threat. As you know, a lot of people don't really believe that they exist. Um, so, yeah, purple dragons, also known as deep dragons, are possibly the least well known of the chromatic dragon family. Most surface creatures have no knowledge of the existence of purple dragons. Many of those that have heard of them dismiss such stories, myths, or misconceptions. You know, being mistaken for black dragons again. And what reminded me, and what I had to kind of talk about a little bit, I don't know if you like Spyro, but purple dragons are huge in Spyro. <laughs> right. <laughs> you, no. you don't say. Yeah, you don't say. look, man. So, to anybody who doesn't know what Spyro is, it's a kick-ass game. I'm gonna give you some lore about some those. poor colorblind person. Uh, uh, I'm more, more of a, a you know, more of a I'm, Crash Bandicoot yeah, kind of guy. Colorblind races, all right. But purple is a color. So, uh, uh, <laughs> you're saying Spyro is black coated? I mean, if you're colorblind, I guess. <laughs> I guess you wouldn't see. Black's not a color. So, so are they going to make like uh, Samuel L. Jackson the voice of Spyro in like the upcoming Spyro oh my movie? God. Imagine no, <laughs> a Netflix rock original. Rock. No, I was just going to be the wrong. Nobody else other than SpongeBob is allowed to voice Spyro. SpongeBob. <laughs> not even like the, the voice same... of SpongeBob, just SpongeBob. No, well, <laughs> it is the same voice actor. Shh, you don't need to know that. <laughs> oh, okay, sorry. You just need to do the SpongeBob voice for Spyro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, I'm sold. Purple dragons in Spyro are a special and rare breed of dragon. You know, the prophecies foretold that a purple dragon is born once every 10 generations. They hold the power to master more than one element, as well as other abilities the guardian dragons thought were not possible. <laughs> Throughout dragon history, there, there is known to be only two purple dragons. You know, you got Spyro, obviously, and you got Malfour. Uh, this was the uh, first purple dragon that became the BBG of the Spyro world. You know, uh, mm -hmm. Spyro lore represent. <laughs> uh, this guy, you know, the first one, believed that the true nature of the purple dragon was to destroy and remake the world, summoning the golems of the deep and destroyer to initiate the great cleansing. Basically, you know, reflecting on the fact that purple dragons are evil. <laughs> so kind of go a little bit deeper into that in the forgotten realms a purple dragon is a talented manipulator of other creatures it achieves control through lies misdirection and mental domination a purple dragon might seek control for any number of reasons including sheer delight in <laughs> bandying its power about a desire to form a bulwark for allies and thralls for security or curiosity about newly discovered tunnels or crevices leading to unknown areas. They loved to explore and they loved mm. new stuff, shiny stuff. They weren't opposed to working with other dragons or non dragon creatures, you know. They were mostly known to work with like the drow, I believe, and stuff like that. Hmm. All right. So they can be underground in the underdark kind of region. Oh, yes. Yeah, if you, you know, you go into the Underdark, anybody who's native to the Underdark will know about Purple Dragons. 
or should, at the, you know, in the most part. Mm. That's cool. I did not mm. know that they the were. The further you uh, go down, the more common or purpley. more rare, I believe. They are. Yeah. The they don't like to the fuck with people. Yeah, the more purple <laughs> they are. <yeah. laughs> the deeper purple they become. <laughs> Deep purple. <laughs> I could see it'd be really cool to have a dragon. I don't know if it's necessarily a purple dragon, or maybe maybe yeah. this is the potential for a, a new kind. It would yeah, be man. one that has a chromatic shell, like a, a, a scarab beetle, from really Ooh. shiny metallic. Maybe a bismuth I, dragon, like oh, one of the crystal I did dragons. see that there Ooh. are like a rainbow. I, I like I that. Like homebrew dragon? Or well, no, like a, a bismuth dragon would be a rainbow g- form <laughs> of a gem dragon. But here's the thing: is bismuth is it a man-made mineral? It doesn't naturally occur. So you have the potential there to store mm. a completely man-made dragon, like an that artificial created one. Oh, that can be. A I mean, that is already story. kind of you know why not? They already kind of do that. <laughs> yeah. Shit, I could see it. I, I love it. I'm I'm already a fan of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like I you know what's. Oh, yeah, you were gonna say. Uh, I I was about to say that kind of if. If anything, the little the big dragon construct thing that uh, mm. that fool's gold used to kind of like fly around and stuff that would be the the, oh, yes, the, the epitome of of a bismuth dragon. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Although I think it's just, I think it is just, uh, it's just straight up metal. Although it is powered mm. by crystals too, mm. technically, part crystal, part souls. Mm-hmm. That would fit the bill. The mecha dragon. The Mega Dragon was one of those things where where Felix was like, Oops, "I have accidentally given them something too powerful too soon in the campaign." Uh, so he had to like, he had to not, he didn't nerf it, but he definitely added consequences. How did he whoop some Mega Dragon? Mecha dragon. <laughs> just uh, I mean, crazy. he he had a he had a desktop image of a giant Mega Dragon. I think he was okay. just like, "Man, this thing is so oh, cool. Maybe. I need to add mm. to my campaign." Because no, he's told me directly that that was. Where he got the inspiration from this image mm. on his desktop background. Um, so I think he just got too excited and threw it into the campaign and then realized <laughs> that one of our characters, uh, Arena, Arena absolutely loves, Arena's player absolutely loves mm. like just Gundams, like straight up like, going on, <laughs> on his favorite show. Man, so Daniel, we have a Gundam in campaign in the, in the works. Well, the, the the guy that's supposed to be running it is very flighty on our server. Oh. So. Uh, oh, dang. to be determined but like we supplied him so with all the source material he could need and we had like players all ready to go but uh, that's one of the things that we're trying to get going with the server because like we got plenty of people that mm-hmm. want to play but we only currently have one uh, campaign running on the server we'd like to see a couple mm. more because like it, it's fun to do we have more like uh, yeah. swapping players between DMs and stuff you know yeah Kind of a player exchange type thing. Be able to find the party that works for everybody. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. uh, party Especially chemistry is a big thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What, how so, much? What, how many campaigns have you had in a single week consistently? Like, how many campaigns have you run on a like? Okay, I guess more better question. <laughs> like, what is your campaign schedule like? Do you guys meet on biweekly? Do you guys? Meet, uh, we do every week. Uh, yeah, oh, just, okay. just a typical weekly. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I run I, uh, every I, Sunday. A, okay. There was a period in, our, in time in my life where I had three different campaigns in a single week. Oh, my God. Ooh. That's crazy. Uh, that didn't, that didn't yeah. last too long. <laughs> that lasted for maybe about a year and a half, I think. That, that yeah. sounds yeah. like it's a recipe like... for burnout. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it was a different DM every every campaign. It was mm. Felix and Ingo and I. We just rotated basically. We each had a campaign oh, wow. running at the same time. Mm. Makes sense. All right. Well, there was, we we didn't have a whole lot else to do at the time. Uh, yeah, I, I get that. Like, uh, we had a player in one of our games, and he had three other campaigns, two of which he ran on the side, in addition to being in our game. Uh. That would be Grim Feather. Like uh, we record our games, oh, yeah. uh, not really as like a D and D le- uh, podcasty kind of a mm-hmm. uh, uh, play thing. Just like recording serves as a good campaign log. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. Hmm. Yeah, I have a friend of mine, uh, Dead Aussie Gamer, who um, 
he will run campaigns for kids at like the local YMCA or whatever. And I think mm. he's like, mm. that is a skill set that That's is pretty crazy awesome. to me. I, I like, love like, he that. He runs like multiple games like a, yeah. a day. Um, but yeah. yeah, absolutely insane. I mean, he won an award at Gen Con for being oh. a DM and like, oh, wow. God damn, did he deserve it? Yeah, absolutely. Shout out to them. Holy shit. Yeah, shout out to Dadazi Gamer. Great DM. Yeah. I got to play with him recently. He's a, oh, an amazingly, uh. Uh, like a, like he's like a smooth DM. Or mm-hmm. like you, you think you're able to throw curveballs at him. You think you could maybe get him on the back foot, because um, you know sometimes when you're, especially when you're in front of in front of a live audience, it's like okay, ha ha ha. And mm. I hadn't gotten to play as a player for a while, so I definitely wanted to shake things up. Mm. I'm like you can't catch that guy surprised. He can right. roll with any punch. Damn. Very DM I, goals. All right, I, I so see that. To this so. Purple dragons were slender and agile, like I said before. Uh, They hunted by patiently stalking their prey. The long body of a purple dragon is particularly light, cat-like and serpentine. The swept back wing wing structure and sleek tapered head allowed it to worm its way through narrow subterranean tunnels. Uh, Purple dragons also apparently have an odor reminiscent of the musky smell of ophidians. Snakes. They smell like snakes. That's kind of weird. But interesting. He's a stick. I didn't know dragons had like an odor. I never really thought about. I mean, it. everything in D and D has an odor, but like yeah, I mean, I, I never thought it. about yeah, like what a dragon would smell like, you know, other than their environment, I guess. I don't know. That's pretty cool. They lived in the uh-huh. underdark and were rarely found on the surface. Um, yeah, they often allied with drow and considered themselves rivals of cloakers and mind flayers. They were chaotic evil and had a psychic breath weapon that confused and disoriented the target. Purple dragons are described as deeply and sadistically evil. They delight in spreading fear far and wide, combining raids for food with outright destruction and mayhem. They are the scourge of the prairies and farmlands. Excuse me. All the more terrifying because they are night hunters, you know, disappearing in the night sky with their purple almost black color, you know, that'd be kind of horrifying. They are almost always, you know, of the chaotic evil or the lawful evil alignments, you know. And they kind of are very arrogant, even for a dragon, you know. For some reason... That's saying something. (laughs) Yeah, for some reason, they think they're like the top of the top, you know. Even the other dragons think these guys are hoity-toity. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) You know, and apparently they, you know, they actively seek out other dragons, you know, both metallic and chromatic, <laughs> to f- just fuck with. <laughs> like they just like to fuck around and find out. You know, these guys strike me as like the hairless cats of dragons. Yeah, dude, yeah. It, it, it it it's like uh, this is the like you know something's fucked when a dragon calls you a narcissist. This this is the epitome yeah, wow. of what a dragon would call a narcissist. Look, and it's not often you hear about you know dragons fighting other dragons. So when you hear about like scholars saying that like purples are out here scrapping it up with reds, <laughs> <laughs> the, the purple dragons are scrapping with the reds. What is this a Ninja Turtle episode? It's crazy, man. Oh, my God. Yeah. I didn't even know they were in the Ninja Turtles. That's crazy. Dude, I, I grew up on Ninja <laughs> Turtles. Like, you, you pick an iteration. The purple dragons are almost always there. And, and it's fantastic. Like, I, I love most iterations of the Ninja Turtles. Look, and you know uh, what kind of solidifies the fact that, you know, purple dragons and deep dragons are kind of badass in my eyes. Man. They uh-huh. So their preferred food were seafood, right? Kind of weird, you know. Considering they live in the ground, but I guess you know they got cat clams, kuatoa, you know, like you know, mm. underground fish. You know, you got like abolis and stuff. Yeah, they they ate abolis. You know, like maybe there's a drow fishing village on a lake. Yeah, you know exactly. Yeah. But um, having like abolis just like in your repertoire of favorite foods is <laughs> that's, that's kind of a flex. Is <laughs> that is a flex for sure. You know, that's kind of, you know, that said they were nearly known to eat anything, you know, pretty much. And they, it was not uncommon for underdark societies to trade with a deep dragon by offering them food in the form of human or humanoid prisoners, you know, or livestock or whatever. <laughs> it's pretty cool. 
Now, other layers were usually up located in the upper dark and the middle dark, usually no deeper than seven miles, 11 kilometers, and were highly, highly idiosyncratic. Some were built within ancient ruins, others on the shore of underground lakes, and others were carved out of masses of living fungus. Regardless, most of these lairs were full of secret passages to allow the dragon to make quick escapes and to prepare surprise ambushes. Lairs were often difficult to access, even for the dragon itself, without using its serpentine or humanoid form, and were filled with traps and servants to protect the dragon's horde. We always know about dragon hordes. <laughs> <laughs> always. Yeah, it was, they especially uh, speaking of their kind of hordes, you know, they were known to transplant dangerous specimens of fungi into their lairs to serve as traps. And in general, underground varieties of fungi were often uh, abounded among their their lairs. They just kind of lived there, you know. The hmm. uh, symbiotic feeding of the magic of the dragon and the fungi, you know. Okay, I, I like that because. There's so much you can do with a dragon lair using fungus. Like you can let your imagination run wild when so, it comes to mushrooms. Something interesting I found in my research of purple dragons. Purple dragons do not really exist in fifth edition, right? So it's usually right. mostly second and third edition. When you oh, get to fifth edition, my fifth edition is subpar. Yeah, mm. you get to fifth edition, and then you get to things like deep dragons, where they become one in the same. But mm. the you know the descriptions are so different. You know, their abilities are mostly the same, but still, you know, have some differences. So it's like, why why make this change? Like, <laughs> for what? I don't know. Like, if you really wanted to, like, uh, s- separate it, but kind of keep it the same, just say, like, a, you know, purple dragons are the females and deep dragons are the I mean, males or vice versa. That would, that would and, make sense. You know, I could see that. Definitely but, distinction. You know, for the sake of that, I'll go ahead and give you a little short bit tidbit on what a deep dragon is. So deep dragon, also called purple dragons, or drakes of the depths and silent hunters, were a type of chromatic dragon that lived in the underdark. Despite their large size, the dragons were slender and agile, just like their, you know, purple dragon. Uh, They had the snake-like bodies and narrow wings and the thin limbs, allowing them to crawl through the tunnels. Um, Their dragon scales were more the color of amethyst, but while in the dark, they appeared uh, almost nearly black. Um, So... You know, most of the same. Oh, the okay. The younger ones apparently had more of the uh, purple or maroon coloration to their skulls. This sounds a little and bit more older, metallic-ish. Almost. And older deep dragons were known to develop the fungal growths around their heads and necks. Hmm. All right. That's really cool. I could see that, like, almost looking like a crown of mushrooms. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. I it like exactly that. Kind of like that, you know. And it makes sense with their, you know, the way that their layers work if they have this symbiotic relationship. You know. I could see them like cultivating yeah. it on their back, like yeah. the way like moss grows on um, sloths. Yeah. Like, they cultivate yeah. mushrooms on their backside. I mean, okay, I'm all. All of this stuff always gets my brain. Running. It really does. It's mm. More of like I'm thinking of like a herbal dragon. That like has it, it. It has all of these different ointments and funguses and plant Ooh. life living on its back, and it'll actually help out people by like giving them the cures they need. Maybe it's a medicine dragon that I like that. Ooh, it's just like I like, like that. Brown. It's like a Torterra. Like comes up out. Like yeah, um, yeah like a you like, got oh, medicine you got dragons, stickers? and then like a. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, so they, they could have uh, poisons, they could have uh, medicinal herbs, like they, they'd have like a whole selection mm-hmm. at their disposal. Totally. You come to it, you're like, oh, I want this yeah, poison, I'm like, why? That. You must yeah. prove to me you are worthy to receive this herb. Oh, Ooh, yeah, that's a good that, one, too. You have to, you have to work good. really hard to get the mushroom yeah. from it, like answer a riddle or a, do a test. Yeah. Or, or maybe like a Mission it Impossible. It all, like, yeah. You gotta, yeah. Mm-hmm. You approach right. the dragon for like a uh, mushroom and it's like, no, you must do this task. <laughs> yeah. And then you see from the corner of your eye, an elderly woman shuffles up and she's like, something for my arthritis, please. <laughs> and it goes, oh, here you go. You're right away. Yeah, yeah. Some like, still- <laughs> the draconic you- pharmacy. <laughs> Mind your business. Yeah. Get out of here. <laughs> I love it. Uh, it. Dude. So, dragon pharmacist in another world. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and get to the end here and talk about the abilities, you know. Well, there is no official stat block for purple dragons, and really, not really one for deep dragons either. Though there is a fifth edition uh, SRD. But, you know, 
it's dragons. You can kind of make the assumption of what the stats are like. Mm. You know, you can just get, you can just kind of mix like a red and a blue, you know, for stats, and you know, you pretty much got it. But mm. what comes special with purple dragons is you know the spells that they get. They get gusts okay. of wind three times a day, and can even do this at a young age. You know, when they are juvenile, they can do pyrotechnics like heat metal, uh, fire shield, um, and suggestion, wall of force, things like that. You know. Um, flying here <laughs> in order to allow them to navigate the narrow underground tunnels better uh they also had the ability to kind of transmute the rock to mud cast spells like pass wall freedom of movement and stone shape um they also had the uh, oh sync ability was their unique shape changing power which developed as they age the first form they learned to adopt was that of a winged snake it did not reduce their overall size, but allowed them to slither and fly unimpeded by extra limbs. The second form they learned to adopt was that of a normal humanoid with a normal polymorph spell. Okay. All right, and what's cool. also kind of interesting is deep dragons have a uh, an immunity to becoming intoxicated for some reason. Huh. Maybe by the mushrooms they eat? Maybe. Yeah. yeah and they also like psychedelic have psychedelic mushrooms, the, uh, you know. Yeah. They also have the uh, the psychic uh, breath weapon. Hmm. That, that's very interesting because, like, uh, that. Yeah. So it's got to be related in some degree to gem uh, dragons because mm -hmm. a lot of them have a lot of psionic stuff going on. So. Well, I'm not too sure about. It's really funny deep you dragon. say that. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah I'm not, I'm not too sure. Why say that about? Oh gosh, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. I'll let you I was gonna say. I was going to say, it's funny that you mentioned the gem dragons, because when you mentioned oh, that they can't be intoxicated, I thought like, oh, it's like how, uh, like I was thinking, like, that would be interesting if it was mm -hmm. an amethyst dragon, because there's an old ancient Greek uh, wives tale that if you drink wine out of an amethyst cup, you won't get drunk. Oh, yeah, I did Ooh. hear about that. That like I've crystal, never heard of that. Like neutralized mm -hmm. poison and stuff. It's because amethysts and the color purple is associated with Apollo, mm -hmm. who is also the god of wine. Yeah. And apparently is like why uh, why you wouldn't get drunk out of drinking out of amethyst. Oh, yeah. Makes sense. Hmm. For sure, for sure. I like it. Weird I'm, Greeks, I'm not too sure about myths. the deep dragon's breath. Maybe like a spore breath or something. Oh, that'd be cool. Seen. Like Valhazak yeah. from That's actually, yeah, yeah, that's where my exactly brain was like going that. to. Yeah, fluvia kind of breath. Yeah, because like you know? the, the DM brain's like <laughs> mushrooms, spore breath. Gotta be spore I'm glad breath. glad you mentioned Valhazak because I, I was looking at your Twitter earlier and I saw you were talking about Monster Hunter. And I was like, uh, oh, I love Monster Hunter. <laughs> I know, me too. I was, I'm oh, so excited man. for whatever they come up the with. The new next. Monster Although, 6. Oh, man. Yeah, Monster Hunter 6. Although I'm, I'm, I would really love people are saying Monster Hunter 6 or Monster Hunter World 2. I would yeah. love Monster Hunter World 2. I, I yeah, I would too. World, mm. you started with World. Oh man. Yeah, yeah, Amazing. that was where I got started with it. Hey, look, if you ever play Monster Hunter, you need somebody to play with. <laughs> I'm willing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking I gotta, I gotta get back into playing. What's the newest one that came out on the Switch? Rise? I stopped playing it. Yes, hey, Rise. Rise. I gotta get back to playing Rise. Rise I kind of stopped good. because I was sad that it wasn't enough like World. Yeah, mm. I feel that. I feel that. It was a bit too, bit too like just walking in a corridor to the stadium and then yeah. back. <laughs> yeah, I feel that. <laughs> but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed talking about purple and deep dragons. <laughs> you know, I cool. have learned a I lot. Think they, you know, I think they I need some of... love. <laughs> yeah, I think so. And now I've I've got I've learned about purple dragons, and I've also got some great little uh, yeah. nuggets of ideas <laughs> nuggets for of like wisdom. how to nuggets, uh, pearls of wisdom yeah. on how to like uh, maybe maybe twist the story around mm. on those guys and make mm. it different. Yeah. Surprise your party with a purple dragon showing up. That would go crazy. Uh -huh. Like what the hell? <laughs> mm. You could plant Speaking some of seeds. nuggets of wisdom, though. <laughs> I think. This is a good time for Ryan's Descriptify. Ah, yes. The the classic Descriptify. Now, Sam, uh, yes. you've seen uh, Critical Role. Uh, they did a little series uh, with the yeah. animated uh, stuff. And Vox Machina? Yep. Yes, Vox Machina. And in that, they, they mention a word. Like, th this was a new word to me. And, like, 
then I saw it again uh, later, like someone else was uh, using the word ziggurat. And I'm like, whoa, what is a ziggurat? It's a cool word. I do like that word a lot. It, it yeah, is I like cool. I word right there. Yeah, I, it kind of gives me the same vibe as like obelisk, you know? Like, yeah. Oh, totally. Major obelisk vibes. It also sounds like a dude. <laughs> yeah, right? It so, does. Well, it sounds like a guy. I mean, a ziggurat. <laughs> <laughs> Great <laughs> wizard ziggurat. This is a ziggurat. Okay, I- I'm glad you asked. Aside from it being, <laughs> <laughs> my dad went out for a pack of ziggurats and never came back. <laughs> I haven't seen him in years. <laughs> I-, I just think Broly like ziggurat. <laughs> oh, yeah, Broly. <laughs> Ah, uh, damn. It sounds like a Pokemon name. Doesn't it? Ziggurat. Ziggurat. <laughs> totally. Uh, Ziggurat! Yeah. Use tackle! Is. <laughs> Please tell us what a Ziggurat is, because we only have wrong answers so far. <laughs> okay, well, it's a massive structure that's... Uh, well, hold on, let me pull up the thing here because like the first thing that shows up is the Mesopotamia shows up in the Mesopotamian Valley and Western Iranian Plateau having the form of a a terraced step pyramid so it's like a a big old like kind of a a stepped pyramid type uh, structure like a ritual type uh, a building I believe it's like a like a big kind of like uh yeah like you said like a pyramid but it's like a big it's like a spire tower, right? Uh, yeah, like they they have plateaus. Uh, like that's the very like a uh, you know how the uh, the Mayan pyramids like they have the, those yeah, yeah. wide areas mm-hmm. on them. Just imagine the, those being like full on terraces, right? So yeah. it, it's like that, and like sacrifice at the ziggurat today. Be, <laughs> be square. Yeah, because yeah. you're not around. Exactly. Yeah, so, if we, we got the terrible jokes all day. <laughs> but yeah like uh, it, it's like a pyramid and it's used for like a typically like ritual type things and uh whatnot but th- the big thing is like th- those wide terraces it and that's like i, I guess that's the the main difference between it, it and a pyramid right, and right. i just it's love it like has like a temple affiliated with yeah, like uh, it's like part of partially derived from the Hebrew word uh, zakar, uh, which I probably mispronounced, uh, it, which means protrude. Okay. So it's like protrusions, you know, mm. which kind of explains the little, little terracy parts. And right. I, I think like you can get a lot of mileage out of describing structures like that because. A- yeah. Everyone in their mother has seen a pyramid, but how many people have seen a yeah, ziggurat? Uh-huh. Look, I mean, there's definitely uh-huh. words that have like their own kind of like energy that come with them, right? So, like, if you describe like you walk in, you see a massive ziggurat, you know, immediately you're like, oh, you're like, oh, okay. yeah, you probably just get to pay attention because they're like, yeah. what is that? Is that a creature? What is? Yes, that? <laughs> yes, exactly, and that's massive like fifty story ziggurat looms over you. Yeah, Ooh, and it's just like, oh my god, uh, is, it, is, it, is it threatening? And it's like, it's, yeah. a, it's a tower, bud. Yeah, it's just, will, will it bite me? <laughs> and, and that's one of the fun things about uh, having these kind of words. Like, uh, when you're uh, DMing, sometimes players will zone out. So yep, you, you, uh-huh. you, you throw something out like that. Okay, like, wait, what the fuck? Uh, are we going to combat now? <laughs> What'd you just call me? <laughs> hmm. We had an incident, I think that was Fool's Gold, or we did a campaign <laughs> afterwards, where we were sitting around and then Felix is describing something. He's like, you approach a, gi- a giant stone flaming brazier. Okay. And everyone just stops. And I'm just like, and, he just, <laughs> and then one of, somebody else at the table goes, do you mean a brazier? <laughs> <laughs> There's a giant flaming bra? Like, well, I mean, that's... to this day, to this day, that's what I picture in my brain. Like, it has, like how could I, how could I possibly? I don't even want to scrub that out of my if brain. I want that to be the first thing like, that comes into my... <laughs> biblically, biblically accurate, like angel, but it's just a bra. Like... No, no, no. Hear, hear me out. It's like a kids next door battle ready armor. Oh, yeah, yes, yes. yeah, that episode. But just like the, the flaming brazier. Flaming battle ready armor. It's just got Amazing. like the, the, got him. It's perfect. 
And yeah, flaming yeah. armor sounds badass as fuck. Who doesn't yeah, have like flame cold flame or just yeah. armor that doesn't hurt. It's like, you know, it's like Ponyta where it doesn't hurt you or your allies. Yeah. Mm. Okay, one of my favorite like magic items to get is the smoldering armor, which is basically that, but it has Ooh. like the black smoke, you know? Mm. I love it. I love it. <laughs> it's That's so edgy, good. but I live for it. <laughs> <clears throat> What's an Ooh. item that you guys have played with or that you've given to your to your party that you have like it's it's one of your favorites. Mm, that's a good question. Oh, for for me, it, this is an easy one. Definitely, mamas love hot sauce. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. You see, okay. uh, in, in the recent campaign that I ran, uh, the crocodile Mozzie, dear old Mozzie. Uh, this guy is an Australian isekai from like he's like a '90s war veteran from Australia. Um, so he's okay, isekai in. Wait a minute. <laughs> Hang on. War veteran from the Emu War? Yes. Oh, yay. <laughs> I five myself for that one. Perfect. So uh, this guy, uh, he's a he's a combination of like Crocodile Dundee, Steve Irwin, and Launchpad McQuack in one character. <laughs> Fucking excellent. Fantastic. <laughs> no notes. <laughs> uh, dude, uh, this is a this guy's a first time this player. Guy, this <laughs> this man is Australia what Guy Fieri is to Americana. Perfect. Love it. Mm, exactly. <laughs> and the guy that uh his player, he spent months living in character despite it being his first character. <laughs> like we oh. used to we used to work together and he wanted to learn to play D D and we were just We'd be just shooting the shit while we working on the same machine, and uh, he, we'd just be talking in character. Just how else are you gonna pass time? They don't let us have music in there. Awesome. And uh, oh, Mozzie was born, oh. and he just kept going with it. But uh, when I started this campaign, I let each player make a flavor magic item that's custom to them. So mm -hmm. this will have little to no impact in game, and it. There was a few uh, interesting ones. Uh, the druid chose the infinite blunt wraps for rolling his joints. Uh, the, <laughs> uh, the the wizard chose the ring of mage slap, where it, all it is is you just <laughs> smack someone uh, at range for for no damage. So they'll just feel like ah, oh, like someone just slapped you. Oddly enough, never There's actually nothing used except it. your pride. Exactly. <laughs> and then here comes Mozzie with Mama's Love Hot Sauce. Now, this is a hot sauce that gets progressively hotter upon every use. And what we did is we'd roll oh, a, a yeah, we'd roll percentile on the Scoville scale, which uh, can go up into like tens of that hundreds of that millions. So yeah. uh, uh, we kind of had to jump start it by uh, starting off with at least a few thousand. Uh, right. But after that, every use, you, you roll your percentile, add that to the Scoville scale every time. And oh you just be like, oh, you, you got to You got to try this. Uh, put some hair on your chest. Apply some acid to your blade. <laughs> some well, in your eyes. He, he ended up <laughs> just non pure shampoo. What do you mean? He just ended up uh, being a cook, <laughs> essentially, like he put it in his background afterwards. It's like, hey, I, I, I'm i just a, you know, I was a military cook. That was uh, my MOS. Mm -hmm. uh, I did all the cooking. It, like there you go. Th they went to uh, infiltrate a pirate ship and he's on there. And while uh, everybody else is doing their thing and getting hauled off to the brig, he's like, I've come mm -hmm. to join the crew. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> it, it looks like uh, you, you need a cook mic. Well, I, I cook a right good chicken on the Bobby. <laughs> and he's just like, he's, he's just going right to town. He's like, he's the, he had like no charisma, but at the same time, like every time a charisma check came into question, he was just passing everything. Got the riz, man. Got awesome. the riz. Got the riz. It just my kept working. Probably, my favorite probably would be from a one shot that I ran uh, where I let my players kind of, Pick a magic item, and one of them chose the finger buddies. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so basically, like the, like hmm? the what you just like little finger puppets? Yeah, like the little yes. finger puppets. Yeah, the ones yeah. you get when you're a kid. Of them. We had ten of the Yay. little finger buddies, and basically they were a magic item that you could animate with the drop of your blood, and they would become mm -hmm. you know a a creature under your you know under your ally stats. 
buddies, right? So you could have 10 of these little, like, one health finger buddies, but they could <laughs> all grapple, like, one enemy, you know? It's <laughs> finger buddy swarm. So you just, you oh just have God. a swarm of finger buddies. <laughs> Get them, boys! They created some <laughs> chaos with them, let me tell you. Oh, <laughs> it was my gosh. Great. Oh, we definitely got to bring those in for the homebrew segment. Yeah, yeah. We should talk about those one day. Mm. Yeah, speaking oh, okay. of homebrew, we are coming home towards section. the end here. Yeah. Ryan, do you want to go ahead and talk about your homebrew for tonight? Well, you know what? Going into our homebrew s- section, or as I like to call it. Oh, did, what, do you, what do you call it? Uh, my, my soundboard <laughs> stopped working. That's oh, what no. I call it. I have to call it. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes, it's always sunny in the generic realm. <laughs> uh, I, I I present to you guys the uh, the giant slasher. Ooh. Now the the giant slasher. Oh, <laughs> I, I I I click on it and then like it wants to go to another page. So rude. The, the hash bringing. The, 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 the <laughs> you beat me to it, you jerk! I was just—I was trying to remember the. I was trying to remember the joke. I could hear him in my head. Oh. <laughs> Go on, you two, get it out of your system. <laughs> the, 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 the hash bringing slasher. The hash bringing slasher. Sorry, sorry. Go ahead. That's uh, our. That's only our second SpongeBob joke tonight. Oh man, we're slapping. Oh. Dude, when I worked at Pizza Hut, I, we had these uh, big old rolling knives, and like I'd pick them up one day, hold them in a weird way, and like I I would tell people the story of the slice slinging slasher. Oh baby! Oh, oh I, God. I, I'd get the new people convinced. It's like, dude, you ever seen SpongeBob? The slice slinging slasher is a reference. Well, people have it, man. We're getting to that age. It's crazy. Sorry, it's still ahead. syndicated, though. You would think. Anyway, the the giant slasher is a a typical great sword, uncommon. Oh, yeah. It's got the reach property, which you know strength build. Uh, Woo! I'm sorry, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Heavy and two handed. Now, cool thing is that this is pretty open ended. It looks like it's uh, compatible with more than just your fifth edition because it's a weapon. Okay. Right. A two d six slashing. And uh, it's got an ability, uh, Horizontal Gash. You can use your action to make a melee attack against all creatures within 10 feet of you with one attack roll to the AC of all targets. This attack deals 2d6 plus your strength mod in uh, slashing damage. You can Look, man, we need more cleave attacks in D&D. Exactly. Mm. Uh, you can use this ability a number of times a day equal to your proficiency bonus. So This should just be like... An standard of using a two-handed weapon you know what i mean like yeah like you just wanted to create like attack. an air blade yeah mm. range attack well n- not even that but you have you know you have a long ass weapon you could mm. make like a big you know big swing mm. uh-huh totally it always, yeah, like it always makes me wonder like how are you i'm more wondering about like you're in a group of people, right? You're fighting. How are you hitting one person? How are you not hitting multiple? Mm. <laughs> like, That's a good point. Yeah. Absolutely. I think it just becomes. I think it's just about the complication of it. Yeah. Well, unless it's unless it's like a single ability, you can only use add to the day. skill. Like, you know. Yeah, <laughs> I'm looking at this. Like it gets wild. Uh, th- the weight of the blade is 18 pounds. A normal great sword should only weigh about five to eight. Interesting. So this was an extra heavy weapon. Yeah, this is it is, which uh, you know works good with the the range of ten feet, and it's got like a little bit of lore here with it. Uh, it can location. It can only be uh, forged by those handling the finest metals, indistinguishable to the craft of one that doesn't shatter after its very first strike. If ever uh, right. found by long descendants of giants such as ogres or cyclops, it uh, becomes their favorite weapon. Arousing distant memories of their ancestors. Okay, okay. Okay, they got a little idea thing. Uh, idea. Such a long and heavy blade is designed to uh, get rid of all nearby opponents with powerful wide circular slashes. So, uh, link spin attack. 
Right, right. Mm-hmm. Uh, weapon right. upgrades. A blacksmith with pure quality steel can enhance this weapon's properties. Okay. Costs about okay, okay. true metal. Costs about 400 gold. Uh, the first creature hit with the circular m- uh, movement of the horizontal gash receives max damage. Oh, I like it. <laughs> we need more weapon upgrades like this. Like, uh, the Ooh, cool. Th- yeah. Uh, see, it's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, that's why I love little uh, homebrews like this because it mm. creates a template and templates can set a standard. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I always love the idea of players like taking the initiative to be like, hey, what more can I do? You know, to get mm. a little bit stronger without having to yeah. level up. You know? Yeah. Totally. Uh, I definitely. I definitely have had players where I've asked, like, I don't want to get a new weapon every time I get. Right. I want the weapon to grow with me. Yeah. Mm, absolutely. And the cool thing here is, like, it even has a value for it if someone wants to just buy outright at 550 gold. So, you know, okay. that you, you could probably uh, pick one of these up by the time you're third level. Yeah, Reasonably. Sure. Yeah, that's not bad at all. Yeah. I mean, shit, most people, I mean, I know I usually do when I start a campaign, you know, like I did with ours. You know, I kind of let you guys start with maybe more than I should have, you know, <laughs> some money. But that's enough to, you know, you could probably start with one of these and it wouldn't be that crazy. Yeah, I mean, if you're starting at a bit of a higher level, yeah. Uh, yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is uh, put together by uh, the Glorious Compendium and they have a Patreon. So anyone interested in uh, cool Ooh. weapons like this, trust and believe they got other stuff that's going to be like this. Uh, I, I would certainly Glorious hope Compendium. so. Yeah, a full compendium. Uh, check them out. Uh, they got that whole Patreon deal. Uh, I, I've May found I that. About... That's so cool. Hmm? Uh, may I tell you about a homebrew item that I have that's Absolutely. kind of similar to this idea? Mm, please. Um, uh, we encourage it. So this is, in my current campaign I'm running, is I gave the characters... Uh, actually, like infused the weapons they already had with a stone called olivine, which is also known as humming stone. Okay. So this is like this is gonna remind you of some soul eater shit. Oh, I'm ready. Uh, the stone, the stone resonates with the person who is wielding the weapon, and then attunes itself as if it's harmonizing with that person's uh, preferences and their spirit. And eventually, the weapon will develop its own kind of consciousness, and then it'll develop like a special move or like an evolution to itself specifically Ooh. to what that player would love. For example, yes. Dingo's character, she had a large like Oni mace, like a huge mm. maul. And um, the one thing that her character was lacking was any kind of range attacks. So right. what I gave her was the ability for this crystal green shards to grow on the outside of her weapon mace. And then with a large deft swing, she could actually hurl these mm. blades of like mm. pure crystal across the battlefield. I love enemy. that. <laughs> That's so cool. Oh man. It's you know, bit of like it definitely a... fits the theme of what I brought for my homebrew, too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, definitely. Now, picture uh, if, we, you know, we give this character that I'm about to talk about this a weapon that Orion just sucked. <laughs> oh, oh, no. <laughs> so, I bring today the martial archetype of the Slayer. Yes. So, and I got that pulled up on screen movie. here, so... Yeah. So this is brought, um, pulled from Reddit. Uh, if I can get the name of the person here. Looks like no Novrinian, about four years ago, posted on the Unearth Arcana subreddit. Thank you for posting this. I still like it. It's pretty fucking cool. Um, so that's some cool artwork right there. Yeah, it's yeah, I, I, I definitely like, like that. Or like, uh, like, um, yeah, like a Shima vibe. You know? Yeah, like a mm, you know yeah, real Ronin type like, situation. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. So. Blood is the currency of the battlefield, and the reason why you fight. Your style edges on brutality, focusing only on the essence of victory, nothing more. To be a slayer is to stain your hands eternally red for the thrill. Fighters of this archetype usually abuse their disciplined training for this purpose, hungrily seeking battle for more worthy combatants to test their prowess. So, at third level, you get killer's intent. You strike with killing intent. Once per turn, when you take the attack action and make an attack with the melee weapon, you can choose to attack with disadvantage. If you do, regardless of whether or not you hit, the target must make a wisdom saving throw. Uh, On a failed save, the creature is frightened until the start of your next turn. You can use a feature a number of times equal to your constitution modifier. 
We're gaining expend uses on a short or long rest. Okay, let's keep that in mind. You got a chance to cause a fear. Also at level three, you get killer's instinct. Mm. <laughs> you always reach the next victim. Immediately before you make a melee weapon attack, you can use your bonus action to move up to your speed towards the target. If you do and it hits a frightened creature, you gain temporary hit point equal to half your fighter level, plus your constitution modifier, which lasts until the start of your next turn. All right, so we got some synergies. I like mm, it. For sure. Right. So at level seven, you get Bloodhound. Your indulgence in the battlefield has steeled your will and sharpened your senses. You can't be surprised, and creatures within 60 feet of you, if they have blood, cannot benefit from being hidden or invisible against you if they are below half or half their hit point maximum. So you get kind of like a, you know, a bloodhound, a blood scent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I like that too. Kind of get this bloodlust of like finish them off. Level 10, you get thrill of battle. You have an advantage on initiative checks. Also, there isn't a moment when you aren't fighting. When you use your second wind, you may also make a second melee attack with advantage against a creature within reach. On a hit, the target cannot take reactions until the start mm. of your next turn. Yeah. Level 15, we have Harbinger. The sight of you signifies a slaughter. When you use your killer's instinct to move towards a target, your movement does not provoke opportunity attacks and ignores difficult terrain. Also, a creature cannot gain advantage on saving throws against being frightened of you. Ooh, that's fun. Last, <laughs> level 18, last but not least, we have last breath. You've breathed your last breath as a person. The hunt for battle is all that drives you forward. After succeeding on a death saving throw, you can choose to stand up and act as if you had started your turn conscious. You remain conscious until the end of your turn. The first attack you make during this turn is made with advantage and deals an additional 5d10 damage of the weapon's type on a hit. While you have zero hit points during this turn, taking damage causes death saving throw failures as normal. Though three death saving throws failures do not kill you. At the end of your turn, you fall unconscious if you still have zero hit points or die if you have three death saving throw failures. Once you use this feature, you cannot use it again until you complete a long rest. All right. So. Nothing too crazy, you know, and it has some pretty interesting synergy that you don't really see too mm -hmm. often. Yeah. And, you know, I like the theme. <laughs> it's got the vibe. Really go, yeah, you can really go with like kind of till the last breath, you know, final stand samurai. Like mm. party is down. You're going to finish this fight no matter what. I like it. <laughs> I, I know some players that would be for this, you know. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to them for checking for creating this. I That's would awesome. love to make a character like this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really this kinda, do. Do you, like making, and, huh? do you like making super serious characters? No, not really. I mean, a lot <laughs> of the characters I've made are kind of like they're driven, you know, they're they're open to, you know, being changed. What's really funny is mm -hmm. one of my favorite characters I've made was a Warforged monk named Titan who was kind of like, had been wandering the world for a long time. The war he was made for is over. So he's just kind of looking for his purpose. He wants to understand people and emotions. Aww. So there was a lot of, you know, moments of like social awkwardness. <laughs> that was really fun. That to very play. Sweet. Yeah. I like stuff like All that. All he knew was to just be a strong protector boy. <laughs> That's a lot of great potential. I can yeah, for sure. I definitely see that mm. being fun to DM for. Yeah, that that was a great I game. Use. That was a really fun. I missed that. I missed that campaign. Mm. It <laughs> but, fizzled too soon. Uh, it did. It did. Aww. I went to the D went to the was, campaign uh, graveyard. As, yeah. all, as they all seem to do, unfortunately. Yes, I, realm. Our, our DM sure. succumbed to uh, DM depression. So. <laughs> oh no! Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Happens it, it, to the best of us. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But that is perfect to say here, you know, if you are struggling with mental health, know you are not alone and that we love you and we support you. We're proud of everything you are doing. DMing is hard. Being a player is hard. We see you. Mm. And mm -hmm. honestly, and even if you feel alone in the world, there are people who make stuff legitimately just so that you, the person out there, can find it and love it. Yeah, man. Like people who make stories and make artwork and make videos or podcasts. Yeah. 
like we are actually making it so that somebody out there in the world can just find it and enjoy it. And that's the only reason why. Yeah, exactly. As we're coming to the end here, it's perfect time to say, you know, where can these people find you? Oh, okay. Well, uh, on the husk <laughs> that is Twitter, they can find me at, yeah. at Dynabees, D-Y-N-A-B-E-E-Z. Same wow. with, same same tag for Blue Sky, uh, if Blue Sky does end up rising in Twitter's place. Um, mm. What is Blue Sky? That's, um, I've, I've never heard it's of it. Like, it's like, <laughs> what the fuck is Blue Sky? <laughs> Blue Sky is like, it's kind of the one that all the artists are going to right now. Oh, it, it looks, it's like Deviant it Art. Ex- ah, the yeah, new, the new it, Deviant, it Deviant like Art? A, it looks like a legit Twitter clone. Like if you're oh. just like, I wish something else would pop up that is exactly like Twitter, but not Twitter. It's Blue Sky. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, like it, the format is exactly the same. Oh, all right. Um, Sorry, and man. unfortunately, the only those are the only two places I you can really find me because I mm. I can't handle more than one social media at once. So oh, mm. just like, I, I feel that. Yeah. Otherwise, if you follow Dingo Doodles <laughs> on YouTube, you'll likely see. Uh, I mean, you'll see Gothy popping up once in a while. You might also see a couple of uh, collaboration projects that I'll be working on in the future. So maybe oh, yeah. some some stuff. That's a, that's a good place to see what's up with the, with the Fool's Gold crew and the OG Swamp Druid. Mm. I'm definitely curious to see some of that. And maybe we could even have you come back on in the future once uh, uh, some of those projects a little further underway, you know, find out a little bit more about what you're working on. Yeah. Sure, absolutely. I mean, I, I have some stuff that's working. I'm working on in the back burner right now that I'm not allowed to talk about. Oh, but, uh, ooh, secrets. Always good shit, right? <laughs> always. But yeah, I'm <laughs> definitely. When I have the chance to talk about it, you bet your butt I'm going to be grabbing everybody by the collar and being like, listen to this thing I'm working on. Now that mm. I'm allowed to tell you, you're not allowed to leave. Oh, yeah. Happily, we would have mm. you on again. <laughs> yeah. As soon as that comes up, you you let us know. We'll be like, okay, we, we got to get bees back on the show. <laughs> bees uh, in the trap, man. <laughs> <laughs> bees back in the house. Hey. Mm. It was great meeting you. It was great having you. Oh, it was great. Thank you guys for letting me hang out. Yeah. In your Absolutely. Little, your little dungeon space. Ryan, go ahead and do our outro. Your breakfast nook of a dungeon area. <laughs> yeah, it, it absolutely <laughs> is. <laughs> guys, chilling. You know, it's like a DM's table. You know, session zero yeah. is concluded. We're just hanging out. Yeah. Drink. Yeah. Everybody's <laughs> we've got their post their post campaign exactly. uh, campaign drinks, and it's just chill vibes. And wondering uh, what time we're all gonna get to meet up next. <laughs> right. It really yeah. is like that. That's the goal, really. Well, I uh, hope you listeners enjoyed well, this episode. Whoa, Sam. What? We have one bit of news for people that oh. people that actually involve themselves in Critical Role. Uh, oh. Uh, I mean, oh. N- not bees and me, but like you, you might be interested. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know. Proximity. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's, a, it's a small thing. I promise. I promise. Oh, all right. All right. Go ahead. So uh, there... I. Uh, their UK show that they're doing on October 25th, uh, the, the, their live show, is actually going to be, uh, they're streaming it to cinemas in both America and Canada. So, oh, oh, oh shit. One night only. So a- anybody Maybe. that likes that, you know, you could see Critical Role in theaters. Huh. I, I don't know why you would, because it's kind of weird, but like... Uh, yeah, th- oh, they're they go- the third campaign in theaters. Uh, I guess so. Like uh, th- they're going back. It's the uh, Mighty Nine thing. Like they- they're getting back to oh. campaign two for like oh. a one night thing. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Right, right. They're doing like a reunion episode. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that pretty thing. dope. No, there might there uh the, the who was it the Vox Machina reunion or whatever it was pretty mm. sick. Or was it the Mighty Nine one? I can't remember. Whichever uh, one that was, it was really cool. <laughs> Probably Vox Machina because like Mighty Nine would be a reunion for them. It was at this came point. came back in like Fall Ukatoa or something. <laughs> I, I don't no, know. No, I remember. Yeah, because it was Jester. They did like that big like mass heel. I remember. She was crazy. Uh, Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. P- people really like uh, the, the the Mighty Nine. You know, it's a good one. Really good. I would love to see you know they come to a show as well. That would go crazy. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, like you guys keep on keeping on. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah for yeah. sure. I, like, I, I think uh, Matt Mercer, like he does a good job. And I, I'd like to see uh, 
more from them. You know, it's like they That's do right. a lot Grindelwald of good for the community on the whole. Like the Disney of D and D. <laughs> yeah no, that, that's fair that's fair yeah <laughs> i mean they're kind of the flagship of D D right now yeah uh, which i mean and they're great representations for it them over wizards of the coast any day yeah mm. absolutely absolutely they can uh, have the torch <laughs> i i would laugh if like a critical role in like every other podcast and like D D. Uh, adjacent entity that uses it just came together and just like bought wizards from Hasbro. <laughs> Imagine that is so funny. The potential. All right, that's what we're doing. You know, we heard it here, folks. Will uh, the nerd militia is hosting the <laughs> <laughs> the <laughs> plot to buy D and D? Take it back. D&D. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna buy the D and D license. All right, <laughs> we're taking it back into our own hands <laughs> uh, with all of the two dollars that we have to our name. <laughs> Look, man, I have two dollars and an expired somewhere. coupon. If yeah. you take for Michaels, well, I, you know, I, I got some pocket lint to go to go with that, and, and I'll raise you a paperclip. I have whoa, an IOU. Whoa. Down there, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> this has been Dungeons and Talk Shows. Y'all can That's find something. us on our Discord server, on the Twitter, uh, wherever podcasts be podcasting. And, of course, the YouTube and the Rumbles. But, hey, we're nerds, so what do we know? (laughs) Y'all have a wonderful weekend. Have a good weekend! Bye-bye!